Before this commentary begins, I need to get two things out of the way. The first one being, I'm actually fairly new to Spockter's content. I mean, what can I say? I was gone from the commentary game when he was rising in popularity and never really got a chance to check out his stuff until incredibly recently. And the other is, from what I've seen so far, his content is actually incredibly good. In fact, he made a video about Birdie that is honestly quite possibly my pick for video of the year. Now, I imagine some of you are aware that Spockter recently did a video on Disassociative Identity Disorder and its relationship to TikTok, more specifically the TikTok community around it. And it's bad. Like, astonishingly bad. I'm talking not even wrong levels of bad. Mind you, Spockter himself has since realized the video was terrible, hence why he deleted it and publicly apologized for it. So, is it still fair to go after it? Well, I'd say yes. I normally don't like going after either old or disowned videos, Unless there's something especially terrible about them, and yes, this video does definitely fit that category. However, I do want to make it clear that Spockter does not stand behind what he said in the video of his I'm about to cover, and we should all keep that in mind. With that said, let's actually start the video. Now, the video opens with Spockter waffling about dreams before going on to discuss the nature of memories, especially memories of young children. And it's important for you to know that he did that, even though it's not really important for you to know what he said during it, if that makes sense. If not, I'll explain in a minute, so don't worry. But first, let's nitpick some wording. Something I've always found interesting about dreams is how easy it is to forget what really happens in them. People can have some of the most vivid dreams and yet never recall any strong recollection of what really happened. They don't recall having any strong recollection of it, so they don't remember remembering it. What kind of Home Alone 2 bullshit is this? Okay, I was originally going to include that entire scene and make fun of it for a couple of minutes, but I had to rewatch it for this commentary, and it's actually incredibly heartwarming. Kevin convinces this crazy old pigeon lady she can trust again by comparing her heart to roller skates, and it just works! Remember Makes sense now. A lot of my childhood feels like a vivid dream. I can recall a story in my life that I remember as if it were a dream. I was four years old. My birthday was tomorrow. It was around maybe 5 a.m. in the morning. Well, that's a relief. I was worried you were talking about 5 a.m. in the afternoon for a second. Now, what if I told you the biggest issue with this video can be figured out not just through this seemingly superfluous bit about dreams and memories, but even just from the two wording mistakes I've shown you. You see, the biggest problem with Spockter's video is it feels incredibly first draft. What do I mean by that? Well, there are a lot of threads left hanging, a lot of concepts that are never really explained, and a lot of things that just seem superfluous on the surface, but were obviously intended to be connected to other things much later down the line. It feels like Spockter didn't do any kind of proofreading or trimming of his own thoughts when it came to this video. And it really shows. Let's just go over everything that's occurred up until this point in the video so far. Spockter begins the video by talking about dreams, specifically how hard it is to remember remembering them. He then ties this into how hard it is to remember things that occurred as a young child, comparing this to a dream. Now, to begin with, the whole thing about dreams could have been completely cut out of the video and we wouldn't have lost anything except for me re-watching a scene from Home Alone 2 and crying like a bitch. So thanks for that, Spockter. Spockter then uses the fact that he can't remember things from his childhood, even though out of the two examples he gave, he could v almost entirely remember one thing. And although he could not currently remember the other, it formed a lifelong habit proving that he did remember it at least at some point in his life. Yeah, this video is structured absolutely horrendously, and a lot of the examples Spockter gives don't actually end up proving his points, but 
one thing at a time. The point is, Spockter is trying to explain to us that he cannot remember things from his childhood. From this, he goes on to talk about how we do not form our full personalities until the age of 10. These memories just ended up fading into nothingness and went away when I turned 10 and formed a central identity, I guess. The childhood brain is scattered. It's so hard to recall the huge events of my life. I don't even remember moving out of my first home. Hell, I don't even remember moving out of my second one either. I'm just here in my current home. I know I'm supposed to be here. I know there were events that led up to this point, but here I am. Now, I kind of get where Spockter is going with this, both because I've seen the video before, obviously, and because I'm aware of disassociative identity disorder and have a basic understanding of how it functions. However, if I didn't, I'd just be incredibly confused right now. Especially given how Spockter then drops that point, only to bring it up about a quarter hour later, might I remind you this is a 30 minute video, after discussing various other topics, including amnesia, trauma, disassociation, and meditation for some reason. At the end of the day, there are three things Spockter really wants us to take from this video. One, disassociative identity disorder, or DID, is a serious mental illness caused by a person experiencing trauma at a young age. Two, a community has sprung up around this disorder on TikTok where people do things like exaggerate symptoms or even directly lie about having it. This has caused misinformation about the disorder to spread and has led the general public to have a cartoonish view of how it works. Three, this means people with it are less likely to get the help they need and the people without it are less likely to take this condition seriously. Now these were likely not your takeaways from the video because again, Spockter explained these terribly. Going down the list, he half explained number one, kind of explained number two, and gave lip service to number three at the very end. You guys see the issue with this, right? Now, in order for Spockter's video to work, he not only has to convince us that DID exists, which, by the way, not everybody thinks it does. It's one of the most commonly denied mental illnesses even among professionals. But he also has to explain what having it is like and what separates the reality of it from the fiction that you would find on TikTok. And Spockter really understands this and tries his best to, but he ends up falling flat because he forgot one really big thing. I won't say what it is just yet, we'll just continue the video and I'll tell you when it comes up. And that concept brings us to such an intensely powerful perspective on today's video, this concept of amnesia barriers. Dissociative Identity Disorder, according to Google, I see somebody vigorously researched this topic. Is a disorder characterized by the presence of two or more distinct personality states. Dissociative Identity Disorder, previously called Multiple Personality Disorder, is usually a reaction to trauma as a way to help a person avoid bad memories. Dissociative Identity Disorder is characterized by the presence of two or more distinct personality identity. Each may have a unique name, personal history, and characteristic. Treatment is usually talk therapy. Dissociative Identity Disorder is a very commonly faked disorder, either intentionally or unintentionally. There are groups of people in very specific communities who use it as either coping mechanisms, roleplay, or as this simple explanation for certain events in their life. The reason why this disorder deserves proper publicity is because of the large amount of information circling around the modern dissociative identity community. Many people are live action role playing as popular and famous people on the internet. I have to admit, I wasn't aware you could live action role play over the internet. And people say this video isn't educational. Shmeh. Doing these anti-recovery role plays like source calls and yada yada. Credible amount of misinformation circling around this community is outstanding. Many, many young people are latching onto DID as a way to express themselves without having done any fucking research on it. It's common for people in this community to pressure their friends into identifying as a system, or to pressure them into splitting certain types of alters or personality states, claiming that, like, you can be pregnant? In your mind? Really? Who's saying that? For that matter, why are they saying that and what do they mean by that? You're never going to answer any of those questions, are you?
A lot of the times when you hang around people enough, you start to reflect their personality. And that is the same with people with DID. Sometimes you'll hang around people that you know very well and start to basically introject their personality. Well, sometimes this can cause splits in personality, but usually it's only triggered via trauma. Introjects are most commonly things in your childhood that were close with you, such as abusers, caregivers, pets, friends, abusers, unfortunately being the most common. It is very common for people to interject people that they know. When something traumatic happens to them, they start to take the personality traits of the people that were around them at the time. Whatever they take with them is something they feel like will protect them later down the line. This is why people who are traumatized by other people around them start reflecting the identity of their abusers. It's not a good thing, but it just ends up happening. It actually normally doesn't. Only about a third of abuse victims themselves become abusive later in life. But it's always common to interject people that you know. It's very uncommon to interject people that you don't know. It's incredibly rare, which is why it's really suspicious when a lot of dissociative identity communities start mass interjecting Technoblade after his passing. Like, interjections of super personal thing. Those you don't know, you likely will not interject. You could still interject, you know, a character, but it's very unlikely. The mass amount of Technoblade alters we're seeing is just really weird. Okay, so the amount of people we are seeing interject Technoblade is incredibly unusual, and although it's not impossible for this to occur, the fact that it is occurring to as many people as it is is certainly a sign that some of them are faking it, I assume, right, Spockter? Well, that raises an important question, which is, what would the acceptable level be then? Again, you never said this was impossible, just unlikely. What percent of people who claim to have DID on TikTok are doing this, and what percent of people with DID would actually do this? Spockter never answers these questions, and that's a very good microcosm for the biggest issue with this video. You see, Spockter doesn't really give his audience a proper understanding of what DID actually is. He gives us some definitions for a handful of important concepts. However, how the average person with DID would live their lives is only really brought up passingly if it means we can make fun of these TikTok kids. We don't have somebody who actually has DID to properly compare these people on TikTok to. As such, the only real thing we have to go off of when Spockter says this isn't how the disorder works is Spockter's own word. Spockter never shows his his viewers an example of real non-TikTok DID. Compare this to his far superior video about misinformation regarding ADHD that was spreading on TikTok. There, Spockter was very easily able to give an example of somebody who actually has ADHD and could therefore provide personal testimony about the validity of the claims. Said person was, well, himself. Spockter explains what DID doesn't look like, but he never once really explains what it does look like. He explains what it is and what symptoms of it can't be, but he never shows us a person with DID. Honestly, I think I'm going to end it here. I'm not an expert in psychology, so I can't really debunk Spockter's claims on things like disassociation, anxiety, amnesia, and trauma. And even then, there are other places on the internet where you can find more information about what it is that Spockter got wrong. I only did this video primarily because I felt a lot of people were ignoring why this turned out so bad, just pointing out inaccuracies and moving on. Spockter is a good content creator, make no mistake, and I hope, especially with the recent announcement that he's changing the style of content he's making, that this video is going to become the exception moving forward as opposed to the rule. Good night, and good luck. Okay, I'll respond to some of what he has to say about the TikToks. Three, two, one, go! So, riddle me this. If the ID and other dissociative disorders are a result of trauma, the definition on screen actually just says it's usually the result of trauma, meaning it can occur for reasons that aren't trauma. You don't know them personally. It's very, very uncommon to split into something like that. So it's very concerning when we see a thousand different people that split into them. I mean, if it were 999 people, that would be one thing. But a thousand? For reference, statistics vary on just what percent of the world population has DID, 
but it averages out to about 0.5%. The plan has 7.753 billion people on it, so 0.5 of that would be slightly more than 38 million. Divide that by a thousand and multiply it by a hundred and you get 0.0025%. That's not rare enough for you, Spockter? A lot of them stand on the podium of DID, but show such little respect to the disorder they claim to have. They don't respect the condition, nor do they respect other people around them by being so openly ignorant to it. This is a vastly bastardized version of the disorder. It's being misconstrued and misunderstood by even the people that claim to have it. Dissociative identity disorder is a very difficult thing to recognize. It's even harder to describe, and it's nearly impossible to understand, even by some people who have it. And yet, you somehow understand it well enough to determine that these people are bastardizing it? Am I the only one who sees an issue with this line of thinking, and considers this comment ironic given how Spockter has barely helped his audience understand DID throughout this video? Cis meds keep complaining about how we fucked over their life, like didn't they do that themselves? Holy shit, what the fuck just spewed out of your mouth? I'm wondering the same thing, primarily because I have no idea what a cis med is. It'd be very nice if the presenter of the video would do his fucking job and actually explain these concepts to the audience. Okay, that's all I have to say for real this time. Good night and good luck.